So here we have a 12-year-old girl with a nodule on the dorsal finger. Whoa, that was that was a little faster zoom than I wanted. You can see we're on acryl skin. So what's the, um, uh, does anyone want to take this one and tell me what they think? I see a palisaded granuloma again, but more of a blue center. So good. More like a granuloma uh, annulari. Very good. Yeah, this is a perfect example. And I like this one because it's like so strikingly palisaded, just like that rheumatoid nodule. As you as you all know, having done a lot of unknown sessions, I'm sure, with Dr. Parker and the other faculty at Emory, you've probably seen lots of granuloma annulari. And if you have, you'll recognize they really run a wide range. They can go from being very subtle interstitial pattern where they trickle between collagen all the way up to ones that are very well-formed palisades around a beautiful mucin-rich core of necrobiosis. And this is what I'm talking about. You can still see the collagen bundles here. And, you know, how do you know collagen's dead or alive? Well, the collagen's always, I guess, dead, so to speak, right? I mean, it's an extracellular protein. It's made by fibroblasts and pushed out into the extracellular space and, and fills that space up with bundles. The, the key here is that you have collagen bundles and they sometimes get kind of smudgy, degenerated look, but also they don't have corresponding fibroblasts. So it's not per se that the collagen has now died. It does begin to degenerate over time. But really the key to recognizing that necrobiotic appearance is the paucity of fibroblasts. There should normally be scattered fibroblasts in the dermis. And as you get um, as you get well-developed necrobiosis, you begin to lose those fibroblasts. You also begin to get blue mucin or myxoid, depending if you're a pathologist, you often will say blue stuff like this is myxoid. If you're a dermatologist, you, there's a tendency to say mucin. But what we mean is, is glycosaminoglycans, hyaluronic acid, ground substance, okay? And that you often have that in um, granuloma annulari, although I would not say it's a requirement. I certainly see cases of GA that have minimal um, mucin in them, okay? And uh, let's look at the, the uh, cells around the outside here. So again, bland histiocytes, kind of oval to spindle nuclei. Oh, I forgot to enlarge it. I'm sorry. How about that? There we go. And they kind of palisade around the outside, just like we saw in rheumatoid nodule. But here there's um, there's uh, the bluish center. So the blue mucin is a pretty good clue that you're dealing with granuloma annulari. Although sometimes I've seen cases of GA that had fibrin in them. I, I believe, if I recall, the, the, the rule, so to speak, is that you can have, you can have a, a granuloma annulari that has uh, red fibrin in it, but usually you don't see much blue mucin in rheumatoid nodule. But I'm not totally sure that that rule always works. And to me, the more important thing is, is if I see a palisaded necrobiotic granuloma, and I'm not sure if it's a deep, because you know, this is, this is an example kind of, of it's almost deep granuloma annu annulary. It's in the dermis, but it goes way down and you can see there's plenty of it here at the deep the deep dermis pushing down into the subcutis. So when there's a lot of subcutaneous involvement, we usually call that deep granuloma annulari. And those tend to pre present as one or multiple nodules, often on the lower extremities of kids. Sometimes you can see them on the hands or other sites too. But, um, but the, uh, they do tend to be deeper. And because of that, they can sometimes mimic a neoplastic process. Um, so if there's any doubt though, between rheumatoid nodule and granuloma annulari, I just put in my report, palisaded necrobiotic granuloma and a comment that this could be granuloma annulari or rheumatoid nodule. And then the, the treating physician can, you know, inquire from the patient. Do you have a history of rheumatoid arthritis? Do you have joint pain? If they want, they can do some serology, but it's pretty easy to pursue further to see if the person has rheumatoid arthritis or not. And if any doubt, I'd rather have that on their radar, even if it ends up not being what it is. So that way they, they know, okay? And um, yes, so what I was gonna say though is at the periphery, what happens is you see nice palisading right around the necrobiosis, but also as you get out further, there's almost always, I would say most granuloma annulari have this, they have a tendency for the histiocytes to trickle in between collagen bundles like this. And the appearance that gives is the appearance of collagen trapping. So I often can trick, um, trick my residents into thinking that G, if I show them the right part of the slide, and yes, I'm kind of cruel sometimes, I guess, but I'll, I'll trick them into to thinking that a GA is a dermatofibroma or vice versa, because at the periphery of DF, dermatofibroma, and the periphery of granuloma annulari, you have a similar pattern of this fibrohistiocytic spindly histiocyte look 
uh, cells that are wrapping around and trickling in between collagen bundles. And another thing that does that is blue nevus. So when blue nevi lose their pigment, they look a lot like dermatofibroma because they trickle between collagen at the edge and they can have some similarity to the, this, this is what we call the interstitial pattern of granuloma annulari. So the interstitial pattern of GA, it's not like some different disease, it's just a different pattern uh, microscopically of GA. When GA is completely composed of trickling histiocytes in between the collagen, like if it was all, if all of the GA looked like this, then we could say interstitial GA. But what I find much more often is that you just see interstitial areas at the edge of more well-formed classic granuloma annulari. Sorry, it's a little, a little laggy here. There we go. And again, you can see really nice necrobiotic collagen, blue mucin in the background, and the histiocytes around the edge. So that's granuloma annulari. Sometimes there's an inflammatory response with it. Sometimes you can see scattered eosinophils. That's a relatively common finding. And um, uh, what was there any other point I was going to make? Oh, one thing you don't usually see is you don't see well-formed sarcoidal type granulomas. Usually the granulomas in GA are either that ill-defined kind of trickly interstitial pattern or well, very nicely necrobiotic palisaded granulomas with mucin in the center, but you don't usually see like tight sarcoidosis type granulomas. So um, if I see that, that usually steers me away from GA and makes me think of other types of granulomatous disease like sarcoid or like infection. Um, okay, any questions?